What's up, everyone? Aaron Nagler here for PackersNews.com, live on Facebook, late in the day on Wednesday. Finally, the news seems to have slowed down just a little bit, but holy Toledo, there's a lot to talk about. Ever since the Packers uh, went away from that Detroit game with an embarrassing loss, a lot has happened. Um, been on Facebook Live a couple times to talk about contract extensions, the move for Dom Capers to be fired, and of course, Mark Murphy's announcement that Ted Thompson stepping aside to an advisory role. But I thought I'd come back here now, late Wednesday afternoon. The dust has settled somewhat. thought I'd come and see what's on everyone's minds as the Packers launch into their uh, GM search. Um, Tom Silverstein reporting uh, yesterday afternoon that Elliot Wolf has his interview lined up for Thursday. I know Russ Ball, uh, Brian Gutenkunst, his name I always mess up. He will, uh, they'll both be interviewing tomorrow as well. So the internal uh, candidates will be first up and then I have to think the Packers will turn their eye towards the rest of the NFL. So hello everyone chiming in on the live comments. Very nice to see you all. Hello from Alaska, Sean. Hello from frigid New York, which is about to get hit by something called a uh, bomb cyclone. Uh, something like that. I don't remember what they call it, but uh, there's some ridiculous storm coming this way, so I'm sure it's going to feel like Alaska soon enough. And hello from Texas. Jim starts us off with Reggie McKenzie, question mark. I think Reggie McKenzie is more likely than many people probably think. Uh, Pete Doherty, if you haven't read it, wrote a great piece on that exact possibility on PackersNews.com. It was in the morning buzz this morning. If you missed it, make sure you check it out. I tell you what, with all the uncertainty surrounding the Oakland uh, franchise, whether it's you know the you know seemingly inevitability of John Gruden arriving as coach to their pending move to Las Vegas, sure seems like there's a lot up in the air there. It's not quite what Reggie McKenzie signed up for. I tend to think if Mark Murphy approached him, um, he would be amiable to at least thinking about it. And you have to think with Gruden reportedly possibly being offered ownership stake in. The, the Oakland franchise. Now, I don't think that's ever going to come to anything because I don't think the NFL would allow it, but that tells you where Mark Davis's head is at as far as how much power he's ready to invest and put into John Gruden. If I'm Reggie McKenzie, I absolutely listen to Mark Murphy if he ends up calling. He would have complete football control in Green Bay, something you'd think he probably won't have if John Gruden's around. So, um, and obviously... McKenzie has long ties to the program, to the franchise in Green Bay, and he's one of the best talent evaluators in the league. Um, I know people will point to his drafts in Oakland and their up and down nature. That is the gig. That happens all the time. Um, McKenzie has a strong track record as a talent evaluator. Uh, he's done the job, which is something I think Murphy will most likely be looking for. And uh, he knows the, the Ron Wolf way, so to speak. So, yes, I think Reggie McKenzie is a strong possibility. Mike Holmgren as GM. Mike, nobody wants that. Um, Holmgren proved throughout his tenure after leaving Green Bay that he should be nowhere near a front office. He's an excellent coach, one of the best play callers, if not the best play caller I've ever seen. Um, but his time both in Seattle and then definitely in Cleveland showed you he had no business being in a front office. Could Harbaugh be the man for the Lions? Sure, why not? I doubt it, but man. Why not? Are the Packers signing any big names for their defense? Uh, if they are, it won't happen until the free agency starts uh, sometime later this spring. Uh, did the Packers sink their GM candidate choice by saying that McCarthy will stick around? I don't think so. Um, I understand that reasoning, and I am a stalwart uh, defender slash advocate for the idea that a GM has to have their own coach, has to have the ability to hire or fire which this GM, whoever it ends up being, will have. So um, I understand the optics there, and I understand it's probably not ideal uh, being hired as a general manager, but look, you've got Aaron Rodgers, you've got a franchise that's going to give you whatever you need uh, as far as um, whatever assets you might ask for, they're going to provide them. They've got top-notch facilities, and now they've got a coach who has a long track record with this quarterback in this offense who's hiring a new defensive coordinator, um, and has been a perennial contender for the last number of years. So while it's not ideal, I think it's still attractive enough that, you know, with two years on his deal, he's eminently fireable. Ted, 
you know, Ted Thompson left uh, the cupboard a, a bit more uh, stock than I think most people will give him credit for. Uh, and with Mike McCarthy, with a two-year deal, if they bomb out this year in 2018 with Mike at coach, it's easily, easy to fire him with only one year left on his deal. So I don't think it's as off-putting as maybe some might think. GM or DC, who gets hired first? Darren, that's a very good question. I tend to think probably the defensive coordinator. Um, I know we're going we're supposed to hear from McCarthy at some point this week. It may be that we haven't heard from him already because he's busy interviewing defensive coordinator candidates. Uh, we haven't gotten anything out of the building yet, but um, if I were to guess, I'd say defensive coordinator, but that's not necessarily the case. Who wins the Super Bowl? Justin, great question. Um, I'll go with the Patriots because it's easy and I like chalk. A contract is a contract. Why would somebody want to take a pay cut or restructure? Uh, well, Dave, this is your first year watching the NFL or consuming content around it? Uh, people get cut all the time. Contract doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot. Um, in fact, Jordy Nelson went on the radio and said he would be amiable to taking a, a pay cut. So that pretty much tells you all you need to know. What position do you think the Packers need to address first? Orlando, it's all about value when you're looking at the draft, and it really depends on who's available. But, man, I tell you what, I thought Bucky Brooks made a really good point in his, uh, his piece for college football over at the NFL site uh, earlier today. There's a good chance upwards of six or seven pass rushers could be taken in the top 20 picks, um, most likely because, you know, pass rushers are rare. Uh, the Packers have been picking at the bottom of the pile for a good long while. Now this will be their uh, first chance in a long time to be selecting in the top half of the draft, I think they have to come away with a pass rusher. Um, I can't imagine that they uh, exit this draft without somebody who can get to the quarterback. Deborah, is Del Rio a possibility for defensive coordinator? I, I think, yeah, there's a chance there. I, I don't know how well McCarthy and Del Rio uh, know each other or what their uh, working history is. Um, I know McCarthy respects him, and I think Del Rio's always uh, coached well against him. But I wouldn't, you know, I'd just be guessing as far as if he's going to get a call or not. Um, I think it's a very good, you know, I think he's a very good candidate. Uh, but now whether, you know, McCarthy's going to make that call, that that remains to be seen. Do you think they will be over-aggressive aggressive in free agency? Um, it really depends on who the GM is. No, we don't know, right now, we don't know anything as far as what kind of philosophy it'll take. Mark Murphy left it very wide open yesterday when he met with the media saying he doesn't want to hamstring anybody doesn't want to box himself in as far as a hire, and then when he makes the hire, he doesn't want to be involved as far as setting a philosophy uh, of how they're going to approach building the football team. That is the general manager's job. It's Mark's job to provide him with the ability to do so. And I think that's smart on Murphy's part. That's exactly what his position should be. So, um, yeah, we won't know. We won't have an idea. And even when they get the hire, they're not going to lay their plan out for us, obviously. But we won't really have any kind of indication as far as how their team building approach will be going forward until we know who the general manager is. Should we go after Graham? Brian, I get this question every day, seemingly in the last uh, month or so. And I understand he's a big name, he's a talent, I get all that, but for my money, no. I think he's one of the softest players in the NFL. Uh, he's a lousy blocker. Uh, he can get downfield still, and I think he's a talent in the passing game. Uh, he's probably Jared Cook level, probably a little better, but I, I just for the money he's going to command, I wouldn't make that signing. But I, I, I'm not the GM, so you don't have to worry about what I think. A veteran corner and Jimmy Graham will make me happy. <laughs> well, that's good. It's a good thing I'm not the GM. I would like to see in the draft Bradley Chubb. I, I'm getting a lot of that love on my Twitter feed uh, this week. Um, I'd be surprised if he's available at 14, but we'll see. Uh, thoughts on Highsmith's comments? Uh, James, I, I referenced it a little bit. I commented a little bit this morning on Twitter. For those of you who are unaware, um, I believe Alonzo Highsmith spoke to Rob Domofsky of ESPN in a kind of a bit of an exit interview. And one of the things he said that raised some eyebrows was, it'll be good to be someplace where I'm trusted. And I got a lot of questions about that on Twitter. And as, as I said there, and I'll say here, I think Alonzo saw an opportunity to go someplace where, with a good friend in John Dorsey, a guy who knows his strengths, knows what he's good at, um, has a long track record and history with, obviously. They're both excellent talent evaluators. And look, I, don't, I think Highsmith felt he was not going to get a fair shot at being the GM in Green Bay. He's been around 19 years. 
uh, and he's still kind of third man on the totem pole there. And he saw an opportunity to go to Cleveland where he can be an assistant GM, by all reports, and have a chance to turn around the Cleveland Browns. I mean, that would be on the level of what Ron Wolf did in Green Bay. A lot of people don't remember, but when Wolf came and resurrected the franchise, um, you youngins out there who have only ever known Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers, uh, Ron Wolf was told, you're going to the Siberia of the NFL. And the fact that he turned that franchise around is one of the reasons he's in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And I think Alonzo sees uh, being in Cleveland as a possibility of, hey, I could go here, help John turn this thing around, and then have you know, pro probably uh, offers coming in to go be a GM and run my own franchise. I think he saw in Green Bay, he had another you know, 10, 12 years before that was going to happen. So I think he was smart to get out when he did. Uh, he wanted to go uh, for that opportunity. And as far as the comments about being trusted, you know, it's no secret Alonzo is a is an outgoing guy. He's gregarious. He he is not afraid to speak his mind. Anybody who follows him on Twitter or has followed him on Twitter for the last few years knows. Um, you know, he's not he won't back down. He's not afraid to speak out uh, on anything, and that is very kind of anthema and counter to the way the Green Bay Packers operate under. Mark Murphy. It's not how he's run the ship, and it's not how he wants to run the ship. It just seems like a bad fit. And now he's going to go with John Dorsey, a guy who is very free, very loose, uh, much more like Alonzo. So I, I get the way it looks. It's Alonzo. It sounds like Alonzo taking a shot, but I don't think it really is. It's just um, I think he felt kind of boxed in in Green Bay, and now he's going to be allowed to be himself. David Whitehurst. Yeah, that's, that's old school right there. Haha ha is trash. Well, that's an interesting comment. Uh, I don't think Haha ha Clinton Dix is anything near approaching trash. I think he definitely shut it down against the Lions, and I think that was really unfortunate. And I, uh, I thought kind of some of the comments I saw on Twitter today were really unfortunate. Um, you know, Haha ha Clinton Dix is a talented guy. He's a talented player. Um, he was overextended this year. His play definitely dropped off. And I don't know why, because the Packers and he both say that he, they swear blind that he's healthy. So you start to wonder, well, what is going on that a Pro Bowl level player, and I believe he is a Pro Bowl level player when he's right, um, have so many kind of missed tackles, turning down tackles, bad angles, etc. And it got worse as the year went on, and it culminated in that game in Detroit. Um, he's obviously going to go away. He's going to have to come back recharged and recalibrated, so to speak. I still think he's a good player. He just has to play better. Thoughts on the Leroy Butler Hall of Fame snub? Um, I won't go too long on that. I would encourage you to listen to my new podcast that just dropped a little while ago. It's at, available at PackersNews.com or on iTunes. It's called Nagler's Never Right. Uh, I talked about it there. All I'll say is the continued kind of shafting of Butler in favor of John Lynch tells you all you need to know. John Lynch is a name that is known primarily because um, of a lot of the guys around him helped form such an amazing defense, and he was a very good player. Um, but opponents weren't game planning for him. Opponents were game planning for Warren Sapp and Derek Brooks to a, a, a smaller extent. But Warren Sapp was the guy that kept defensive coordinators awake at night. John Lynch was very good. He cleaned up a lot. But he was nowhere near as important to his defense as Leroy Butler was to his. And coupled with the fact that Leroy obviously didn't go national, he has stuck around Wisconsin and has made his name in the local community, whereas John Lynch went on to do TV. Well, now, lo and behold, he's been a semifinalist the last two years running. Um, whereas Leroy is just a, a much better talent and was much better at the position uh, when he played. And the fact that they have now, you know, kind of left him on the wayside the last two years, continuing a tradition of snubbing Packers that has gone back, obviously, decades with Jerry Kramer, like, why do people care about the Hall of Fame? That's where I'm at right now. If these two obviously worthy guys who have been snubbed for literally decades can't get in, can't even get in the conversation, what's the point? Why are we even talking about it? Why does it even matter? That's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, let's see what else people got to say. 
Deborah Butler was awesome. Deborah, that doesn't begin to cover it. He was amazing. Might be late, but your pick for GM. Brandon, I've expounded about this on Twitter a little bit. There's, it's a difference between who do I think is going to get it and who would I give it to. Who I would give it to doesn't really matter. I would give it to Elliot Wolf for a variety of reasons. One, um, I think he's a shrewd judge of talent. Uh, I think he has a good handle on the trappings of being a general manager in the modern NFL. And uh, I, I think he's done a very good job of laying the groundwork for the job. Um, talking to him throughout the years, it, I think he's ready. I know people think he's young. Um, I think he would be an excellent step back from Thompson's conservatism, may, uh, leaning towards his father's aggressiveness, but he wouldn't be out of control. I think he... I just think he'd be perfect for the organization. And obviously there's a lineage that plays into it. Who do I think is going to get it? I think Russ Ball is going to get it. I think Russ Ball will be the man at the end of the day. But that's just guesswork on my part. Uh, let's see. What else? Oh, a lot of other Hall of Fame suggestions, of course. Uh, what's too risky for a top external defensive coordinator to come to Green Bay? I don't think so. I mean, you've got Aaron Rodgers in a top 10 offense when he's healthy at your disposal. As a defensive coordinator, having that kind of support in, in complimentary football, that, that goes a long way. I mean, would you rather go and uh, stake your career knowing you're going to most likely play or you know, coordinate alongside a top 10 offense that is going to score a bunch of points week in and week out to help your defense? Um, or would you rather go, a lot of the other job openings are open because you know the staffs have been fired and they're starting over. Maybe they're going to draft a new quarterback. And you've got to kind of help bring along a rookie QB. I mean, yes, you get to set your kind of set your program from the start. But as a defensive coordinator, I would think you'd want to come and play in Green Bay with Mike McCarthy and Aaron Rodgers. That's just me. Who else do you think will be gone from the coaching staff? Well, Brandon, I know uh, there are some reports out there uh, about a possible sh shifting of uh, responsibilities and or... Um, firings on the offensive side of the staff, and I think that's probably what's going on right now. McCarthy's kind of overviewing everything and making those decisions. Um, I do think there's a chance Edgar Bennett could be let go, and I do think we'll possibly see some more uh, movement on the defensive side of the coaching staff if and when a defensive coordinator is hired. Um, but right now, we know that uh, Turgovac was let go. Um, the inside linebackers coach was let go, but uh, as far as that, anything past that, it's all guesswork until Mike announces it or until we hear uh, from the reporters at PackersNews.com. Who hires the defensive coach? Mike McCarthy. Um, 100%. Mark Murphy reiterated that yesterday. Um, who is the best free agent uh, along the defensive line? Jeremiah, we won't really know until after the uh, transition and franchise tags get applied, and that will be in a couple weeks. Can we get Joe Philbin back at offensive coordinator? Yeah, maybe. Um, I don't see that happening, but it's a possibility. Um, I don't know what his contract status is, but it's always a possibility. Does the staff movement hurt the team? Well, it depends on who ends up in what positions. Um, you're always getting better, you're always getting worse. Right now, it's impossible to say. Do you think Cobb and Nelson will stay? Yes, Al, I do. Um, I really think a lot has been... A lot more has been made of their salaries uh, with the Devontae Adams extension than really needs to be. Um, it's possible maybe they approach Jordy Nelson about a restructure and or a pay cut. I don't think they touch Randall Cobb, and they don't need to. That's the thing. With the salary cap going up as much as it does every year, they can afford a one-year spike at the wide receiver spot, and they'll be fine. It's not going to hinder them as far as signing potential free agents. It, they'll be fine. Uh, now, will that be un would that be unusual to pay three wide receivers over ten million dollars each for one year? Yeah, of course it would, but it really doesn't hurt them in, in a big way. So I don't understand. <laughs> you look ten years younger. Yeah, it's the lack of beard. Uh, why does everyone hate Cobb? He's a trooper, Dustin. Uh, yeah, the pushback against Cobb is a mystery to me. I think people have an inability to look at his play on the field without looking through the lens of his contract. Um, I understand people think he's overpaid and not producing, to which I say, look at the tape. The man plays his heart out. Uh, he's open quite a bit. 
and he can't throw himself the football. It's as simple as that. Do you see us making a bigger splash in free agent agency? Julian, it's all about who the general manager is. And until we know that, uh, it's impossible to say what the philosophy will be. Mark Murphy made it very clear that the GM will be in charge and will make those calls. And so until we know who it is, until we can, maybe possibly can look at a track record, it's impossible to say. I'll, I will say, it's hard to think, and this is kind of <laughs> parroting something, a joke that Murphy made yesterday, but that was in regards to Ted's dealing with the media. But I will say, it's going to be hard for the new GM to be... Uh, more conservative than Ted Thompson when it comes to free agency. Um, if it's anybody who's done anything in the NFL, you know the, the numbers and the odds just say they're going to be a little bit more aggressive than Thompson because it's pretty much impossible not to be. Uh, will the internal candidates who miss out on GM move on from Green Bay? Peter, I would think there's a good possibility of that. Um, those guys, you know, Brian and uh, Elliot in particular, especially now that Alonzo's gone, those two have been moved up the food chain, so to speak, and given promotions and raises along the way. Elliot in particular, uh, a couple years ago, was denied permission both to interview with the Eagles and to interview with the Lions. And then after that, he was allowed to go interview with the 49ers. It just the way that Elliot has been kept around and moved up the chain for fear of losing him, well, now's your time. You can either hire him or probably lose him. Uh, I tend to think he, he wouldn't have trouble finding work elsewhere. Um, and I think this is his moment. That's just me. But, uh, yeah, I think there's a good possibility that, if, especially if it's someone from outside, um, that, yeah, those guys will be those guys will move elsewhere. Oh, thanks, Dustin. Very nice of you to say. Yeah, I hope everyone can check out the podcast. It just dropped a little while ago. Uh, what possible upcoming free agent defensive lineman should the Packers try to sign? Uh, your guess is as good as mine. Let's wait until after we see the franchise and or uh, transition tags applied. Because free agency lists that everybody looks at on the internet right now, most of them don't mean much because almost all the top guys will be franchised. Remember last year heading into free agency when there was this good long list of best pass rushers available in free agency. Well, and Nick Perry was on that list. And then one by one, Melvin Ingram, etc., all those guys got franchised. Uh, and then, you know, Perry got signed. And it's just, that's how it always is. It's, it's very rare that top talent m hits the market. It happens occasionally, but more often than not, teams will retain that. So let's look a little closer to free agency before we start, you know, looking at that possibility. Do you think Ball would leave? Mary, that's a great question. It's something that I wish I had been in Green Bay yesterday because it was asked about, are you afraid that the personnel guys will leave? But Mary, that's a fantastic question because I don't know. I, I would tend to doubt it. Um, Ball's connection to Green Bay started with McCarthy because McCarthy worked with him down in New Orleans. And while I don't think McCarthy was instrumental in bringing him to Green Bay, he definitely... You know, they definitely talked to Mike about it, and um, you know, Mike gave him a glowing review, etc. So I think that tie may help in retaining him if he doesn't get the job. But on the flip side, you're Russ Ball. You've spent the last X number of years making Ted Thompson's philosophy work from a number standpoint. You've just exhibited it again in this uh, great signing extensions for Lindsley and Adams, where essentially they've set it up by doing it before the end of the year saving close to $6 million in cap saving over the length of the contract. Uh, that's Russ Ball in his, you know, that's, that's what he does. Uh, get, try and remember the last time you heard the words, you know, Packers and cap hell or Packers and cap trouble. It just hasn't happened under his watch. So you've gone through all that. You've tried to kind of in, ingrain yourself on the personnel side. You know, we've heard lots of stories, and I think we've written a few at PackersNews.com about how, he started breaking down tape, and he's done scouting reports, and he's gone on the road to scout, etc. He's done all this personnel stuff in the hopes of advancing on the personnel side, of course, of becoming a GM. Well, now here's his chance. And so if you go through all that, and then you don't get the job, especially after being Ted's right-hand man for a decade, or close to it, you know, yeah, I would think there's a good possibility that he says, you know what, thanks, but I'm going to go look someplace else. And that's not a small thing. Uh, he has been instrumental in everything from, you know, keeping 
their own guys, to signing free agents, to cat-friendly deals, to uh, the last big contract Aaron Rodgers signed. He's undoubtedly working on the next one. He's, he's become a very, very valuable guy to have around uh, the Packers franchise, which is why I think Mark Murphy will make the call to make him the GM. And that, again, there's no inside info there. That's just guesswork, but that's where I think it's headed. Do you think Rodgers' contract is next? Yes, Al, I do. And I think it's going to be monster. He'll be the highest paid player in the history of the league until the next quarterback gets signed. But yes, it is most likely next on the docket. How much do you think Ball is the reason why we are cheap in free agency? Uh, minimally. Uh, that's Ted. That's Ted Thompson. And I would say they're not exactly cheap in free agency. Uh, they sign their own guys before they hit free agency. But those are potential free agents. You know, it's just a philosophy of who to sign. Um, but no, I don't think, you know, Russ Ball's not sitting there saying we can't sign him. He's too expensive. Russ Ball's job is to make it work. Um, so, yeah, no, that's that's not on Russ. Kevin Green is a defensive coordinator. That's a, that's a very popular sentiment. Um, I tend to doubt that call gets made. Kevin Green left, and it was kind of mysterious why he did when he did. I know it was said, you know, he wanted to spend time with his family, etc., which is always kind of code for something else is going on. Um, I don't know what that is or what that might even be, but it sure didn't look like the Packers were all broken up about it. And then, of course, he did come back and work in New York with the Jets. I just think that ship has sailed, and I, I would be surprised to see McCarthy welcome him back into the fold. <laughs> but Colin Cowherd said we didn't sign our own guys, you know. Authority on the Green Bay Packers, Colin Cowherd. Should they move Clay Matthews to inside linebacker? Yes. Will they? Who knows? It really depends on who the defensive coordinator is, I suppose. Sad to see Brett Good go. He served us well. Well, he did. Um, he's old and he's oft injured, though. So you got to get better. You got to get worse. You got to get better. Aaron Rodgers for defensive coordinator. <laughs> you can just reverse engineer everything. I like it. Ha! Is your wife still happy the season ended sooner than normal? Yes. Um, is the search committee a bad thing for Murphy? Well, first of all, before he gets twisted, he's not. Mark Murphy made it very clear yesterday he's not using Corn Ferry, which is the 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 outfit here in New York uh, that Jed Hughes is employed by. He is using Jed Hughes as a consultant. He's not using a search firm, uh, and Jed will undoubtedly. Uh, work through his contacts in the NFL, trying to identify candidates, um, and he will bring those to Mark, and Mark may interview them, but it is Mark Murphy's call. He knows. His legacy is on the line here. This is absolutely 1,000% Murphy's decision to make this hire whoever it is. Um, undoubtedly, without question, this will put his stamp on the Green Bay Packers. This is will be officially, basically, the move away from Harlan Wolf. You know, it's been a long time. They resurrected the franchise back in the early 90s, uh, and they've had this great run. Murphy inherited Thompson from Harlan, and now this is Murphy putting his stamp for the future on the Green Bay Packers. It is his first football decision, first major football decision he's had to make, and it will be long-reaching and long-standing and will absolutely define his legacy as president and CEO of the Green Bay Packers. No pressure, right? So we'll see. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks so much for all the questions. I'm sorry if I couldn't get to yours. They do come fast and furious. A lot of interest, obviously, because of the situation. But keep it here, PackersNews.com. I'll most likely be back tomorrow to talk some more Packers with you, um, regardless of whether there's news or not, because there's always something to talk about, right? Thanks a lot, everyone. Have a good night.